Hey fellas, we're in the fickle winter and a storm's brewing. Looks like one to three inches are in the forecast when you trim that hibernation bush that's taking place in your pants. Luckily, our partners at Man... I can't fucking do this. Luckily, our partners at Manscaped specialize in products to make sure you're walking around town with beautiful snowballs. Join over two million men around the world who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. Manscaped is here to provide you with the best tools for your grooming experience. Offering precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Oh, we're back at that, are we? The Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer is the best hygiene tool for the modern man. Because of their ceramic blade and advanced skin safe technology, snags on your snowballs will be reduced. The trimmer is also waterproof, so you can trim in the shower or a jacuzzi if you feel savage. Manscaped's performance package is the best buy of 2021. The performance package comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0, Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer performance boxer briefs and a travel bag. Have you ever noticed how nasty nose and ear hair is? In fact, 79% of partners polled admitted that long nose hair is a major turnoff. Might as well use the best tools for the job. <laughs> <laughs> that one wasn't even intentional, to be honest. <laughs> The bundle also comes with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner. The Crop Preserver is an anti-chafing ball deodorant which will make your balls smell nice and make you feel like your testes are walking on a winter wonderland. The Crop Reviver is a spray-on toner for your balls. It's made with soothing aloe and witch hazel extracts that will make your balls look up at you and say, thanks. Hey, that's a bit harsh to Hazel. Why'd you call her a witch? Oh god, that's bad. <laughs> Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TRUEFOOTY20 at manscaped.com. They also have a ton of other amazing men's hygiene products on their website, from disposable mats for your pubes, to foot deodorant if you're into that sort of thing. That's right, Bush. The exciting offer that we have for you guys is 20% off and free shipping these elite ball grooming products if you go to the website manscaped.com and use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. Thanks, Manscaped, for making our winter wieners look so good. Now time for the podcast. Hello and welcome to one of the truer football podcasts you will ever see. Number Top five. 76, I think. Ooh. El Hungover Edition. Very nice. As they say in Spain. Um, do you reckon I'm giving off strong Dill Buckley vibes? Mate, I, even... I was going to say something. Are you trying to like copy him or something? Well, yeah. You could do worse than try and copy Dill Buckley in his podcast, but that was not what I was going for. I just uh, rolled out of bed this morning after a big night yep. and uh, had a shower, and here we are to do content. Um, Ill-prepared, as always. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Busher, how are you? I'm more prepared than usual, actually, I mm. must say. It's a, you, you were quite impressed with my four pages or so I've got. I've never seen you, maybe one other time, come yeah. to a podcast with printouts. Yeah, I usually I've I've just have it on my phone or not at all. I was going to say not at all most <laughs> yeah. of the time, but yeah. no, that's all good. So um, today, the point of today's podcast is we've just ticked over the midpoint of the season. And naturally, uh, it's time to look at some mid-season reviews. Yep. So we've done this at least the last two years, I want to say. We're a fan of it, what yeah, can I say? Yeah, so basically the format is we'll go through each team alphabetically. And uh, we've split the teams in half. So yep. you'll talk about some teams, I'll talk about the other half. And uh, we sort of give... You know, look at what their preseason expectations were versus where they're sitting. Uh, some positive and negatives, um, and some general talking points on how that team goes so so far. And a letter grade because mm. it's nice to have a little nice and succinct grade to see how they're going. So, um, yeah. So we've decided to go alphabetically. I will start first with the Adelaide Crows. That's good. I was wanted confirmation on that one because my notes. Can you imagine if like yeah. we miscommunicated <laughs> and then, then we both did all the same teams? Adelaide. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> that, that would be a very true footy thing to happen, but. It'd be a giggle and a half, to say the least. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we'll get right into it, because this has potential to be a longer pod, and I want to keep it concise. Yep. But let's start off with the Adelaide Crows. So, obviously, being Wooden Spooners last year, their expectation this year, realistically, or their at least their goal, I've put that they wanted to avoid the bottom four. Um, they currently sit 15th with four and seven, which I think puts them in the bottom four. But I think even... So, I think bottom four was their maybe am- more ambitious goal. You know what I mean? So the fact yeah. that they're fourth last, I don't think they're losing sleep over that. Because they, I think at four and seven, they have a lot to be happy with this year. Especially the start to the season. Yeah. And they've, well, I mean, they've knocked off the Cats and the Ds. So two big mega dogs of the AFL, yep. as they say. Um, but the, the positives, there's, there's a quite a few. Tex Walker's probably the most prominent in terms yeah. of one of the more surprising returns to form I've ever seen from a player, <laughs> like on his deathbed in terms yeah. of his career. Um, even bigger than Richo's once he got stuck on a wing. Because nah, Richard I, I died know. off that hard, I guess. When yeah, I, I think like to how hard Tex had died off. It's hard to compare because I, I don't really remember it as well. But uh, 
like yeah I think Tex had just it had been a while since he'd fired a shot yeah. Um, but yeah I, I have him in all Australian form at the moment um, yep. for this first half of the year uh, their number two pick Riley Tilthorpe's debuted kicked a bag of five yep, that um, was nice. so the fact that he's at least playing um, that, that's a positive and I, th- I think they've just got good sort of organic growth from some younger players like your Ben Keyses and your Lockie Scholes Ben Keyes has been very impressive yep Sam Berry as well is a first year player who's uh, been you know a regular for the most of the year uh, in and out of the team I think he's injured at the moment but um, yeah McHenry's been consistently in the side I've seen from when I've caught Adelaide games which is good he was a high pick for him a couple of years ago yep that's it but I guess I guess the most broadly the broad positive for Adelaide is their competitiveness and I think that's the most promising thing you can take out of this year and it shows a really strong culture in the playing group I think the fact that they're comp- uh, competing with sides I think even like they knocked off Geelong in round one uh, even against Sydney when Sydney were red hot yeah I think they ended up getting done by like five six goals but it was a good competitive game of footy not like some other games where yeah, they really, haven't been pumped really exactly so I, th- I think I- I'm very impressed with that how Adelaide's gone about it this year I think obviously long term this I mean I, I think they're still in a, in a rebuild but it's the fact that they're poised to potentially miss the bottom four in a rebuild. Uh, you can see the progress of the rebuild already, sort of thing. Exactly, yeah, which I think that's all you can ask for for a team that yep. was dead last last year and with four games to go hadn't won a game or something like that. So um, negatives, not too many. I was just, I pretty much put, they're not a realistic finals chance. Yeah. And that says a lot about whether they are. <laughs> I've got that as a negative. Uh, I don't think there's too much negative to say about Adelaide. I think they've had injuries to Matt Crouch and Daniel Talia. I hadn't really seen them this year. Uh, but again, that just kind of speaks more to how well they've been going with two key players out like that. Um, I guess the question I have before I give my letter grade is, do you think this is a dead cat bounce? So kind of a resurgence before the real rebuild starts, sort of like what we saw with Hawthorne a couple of years ago? Or do you think the culture is too strong to be bottom four for too long? I would, I would have said the latter a few years ago, but with the issues they've sort of had like since 2017 grand final, like some of the... St- ways like even Mark Rusciuto is still a prominent figure in the club as a president or CEO mm-hmm. or whatever he is going out on the radio and publicly denigrating guys and stuff like that mm. uh, so I probably wouldn't back in their culture as much as I would have four or five years ago but similar to the Eagles they were long term like club that's in a like football state that's joined the AFL they were like the first one they've had that rock solid foundation mm. they've had the success so they can probably draw on that and get back to it once tweaking a few things and they yeah. seem to be doing that Yep, that's for sure. And yeah, I mean, I've kind of asked you a question that we don't know the answer. We can't know yeah. the answer to. I, uh, I just, I, I think just the resurgence in the back half of 2020 and, and then the form they've carried into this year, I'm thinking I have faith that this rebuild is going to go well when you yeah. compare it to some other rebuilding teams that it hasn't. I've given them a B plus because I think, uh, okay, so I put avoid bottom four, but realistically, I don't think they're a bottom four side on quality. Yeah. And the benefits have far outweighed the negatives this year considering their expectations. What, what would you rate them? Yeah, probably similar sort of tier, B, B plus, that sort of ballpark. Yeah, yeah, so I think that's fair. So Especially for the start of the season. Yep. So Adelaide fans, if you're watching, uh, let us know how f- well that aligns with your own views. That'd be great. Bush, how would you like to take us off with Brisbane? Well, I'll start off with their record. I've, I'll note that I did this before last night's game against the yep. Bulldogs. So I, at the time, they were third on the ladder. I believe they're fourth now. But the record I had is 8-4, and four, which is now 8-5, and five, but... Halfway for the season, eight and four pre buyers will go with. I think. Sorry, I will just cut in there. We didn't actually clarify. We're filming this after one game in round yep. twelve, so every everything we've done is up to the point. It's the yep. midpoint of the season, so yeah. okay. So the way we release this on a Monday, a couple of things might change. But yeah, yep. yeah sorry, continue. Okay, yep. But yeah, for Brisbane, their expectation was being the thick of the hunt for the flag, realistically. Yep. Like, and so far this season, they're in the thick of the hunt for the flag. They're a top four team at the moment. Like the, they've really picked up the past few weeks, like after a bit of a sluggish start. Mm-hmm. Their positives, like I'd say McCluggage and other guys like Jared Lyons stepping up without Lockie Neal. And even when Lockie Neal has played, he, which is one of my negatives, he's been underwhelming even when he's been on the park. Mm-hmm. I've also been quite impressed with guys like Zach Bailey and Lincoln McCarthy stepping up because Cameron's still having not a bad year, but he has games where he just does nothing. Zach Bailey's been a stupidly good player. Exactly. I can't... He's almost like... He reminds me of Toby Green, not so much in play style, but in the way that they recruited an inside As, mid. Yeah, mid. With, there was yeah. maybe a little bit vanilla, or just like a good sort of inside mid, who's able to hit the scoreboard so prodigiously. He's had like multiple four-goal games. Like, he'd, yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, when Cam... Because Cameron will still bob up for G- Charlie Cameron-esque games, but when he hasn't, like, Zach Bailey's bobbed up a few games before. Like, Lincoln McCarthy's had some good games. Yeah. 
His yeah. pressure in the forward line has been great from McCarthy as well. Had a great burst away goal last night. I don't know if you caught it, but um, got the ball and sort of yeah. like with some right on his... Uh, Bailey, yeah, off the, off the hands. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. ran to 50 and nailed it. I was like, wow, I didn't yeah. actually know. I knew he was good. I just didn't know he had that in his tool bag. He was a higher pick, wasn't he, when he was taken? I but think he was like top 10? 15 to 20. I don't okay, think... Yeah. He, I, don't, I could be wrong. I don't think he went top 10. I think he's uh. 15 to 20-ish. So. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, my negatives was basically Neil's been underwhelming this year, even when he was healthy. Mm-hmm. My grade, though, is probably like a B plus. I've sort of got like they're yep. doing pretty much what you need them to do yep. for what their expectations were. Preseason, uh, I know that you said that you thought uh, Brisbane were probably more in the four to six range yeah. this year rather than the top three like they were in the previous years. Uh, how do you reflect on that? That now is that still so? How you I still it? sort of think of, like the position I took at the time was that they'd finish lower, but they'd be better for it come yeah. finals. I think was exactly. the. But they've sort of still looking like they'll be better for it in finals, like mm. the way they've gone this year, especially with the slow start. They've sort of improved and yep. shown they can adjust and improve, which is important in finals. And I also think they'll, it'll be easy for them to stay in the four, especially like with this Melbourne situation sort of starting to deteriorate. True. That might play into their advantage similar to last year. Yeah, I'd love to think that's not going to be a factor. Yeah, so I don't. Cross, but yeah, yeah, that's true. I hope it's not, especially with the buyers. They should be able to work through it by the time the buy rounds are done, I hope. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, cool. So I would agree with you. I, I put B minus yep. only on the basis that they've been top two the last two years, and uh, there's still obviously a shot for top two, um, albeit having lost last night. But uh, it may be third or fourth this year versus yeah. the top two. But yeah, uh, I, that's the only reason that uh, compared to their pre season yeah. expectations, that's probably a B minus. And also with my earlier thing where I thought they'd finish four to six and they'd be better for it, a couple of teams I thought that would be above them have underperformed. Mm. But then Melbourne, yeah. I didn't expect either. True. But still. Even the dogs, yeah. 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 No, nice one. Cool. All right, we'll rattle on to Carlton, uh, who I will take us through their pre season goal. Finals. You look like Dill Buckley, so you have to be nicer to them than you usually are. <laughs> uh, well, pre season goal finals. Uh, I think yeah. I think they kind of reached a point where they're coming to the end of the rebuild, had some mature age recruits like Zach Williams and uh, Adam Saad, and people were talking about, uh, particularly internally, like their fans were thinking, this, there's no excuses now. We've got to make finals. Um, and they really, really rated themselves, and understandably so. They currently sit 13th and they're 4 and 7. Um, fair to say, a fair. I, I think it's a frustrating year for Carlton fans from oh, yeah. what I can see. Uh, just they look like they're in the exact same sort of boat they have been in the last few years look at their results in isolation other than a loss to Collingwood they've actually gone all right uh, particularly in the last five or six weeks I think they've come up against some tough opponents and not disgraced themselves I think it just would have been nice for them to pinch one of those to really get the belief going yeah I think they've held like a good account for themselves they just haven't had the results on the board Mm. like like even Essendon you could make that argument for but then like the last few weeks they've started to get the results on the board so it's sort of not as much of an issue yep like Carlton probably just need to catch one of those hot streaks yeah, and well, they beat Essendon, and yeah. Essendon are looking good. So we have to look at that win and say, how well, they've actually played a good team sort of at the peak of their powers at the moment, uh, and they've won yeah. that. So that, that is something to consider as well. And obviously teams do improve over the course of the season, so Carlton could be a far better team at the end of the year than they are at the start. That does happen quite a lot. Um, so positive, generally speaking, Sammy Walsh on the around the mark for All-Australian this year, yep. which is a bit of a surprise. I don't know why, because he was a runaway rising star winner. Um, and he's just, you know, a prodigious talent and racks up 30 touches a game. And uh, But I guess it's surprising just because of how competitive the All-Australian midfield is. The fact that he's doing what he's doing and around that mark is a massive testament to him. The slow return to form for Cripps and Doherty. So Cripps and Doherty would have been a negative a few weeks ago. Yeah. I'm putting as a positive that mid-season that they're starting to play better. Yeah. Um, and I think they shuffled Doherty up the ground. And I'd put Saad, uh, the addition of Saad and Williams, that's been a positive. You know, eee, it. Williams has been a bit slow for him, like yeah, for what right. they were hoping as an inside mid. I suppose. They are shuffling him into a different role. Yeah, uh, yeah you're right. I, I do like Adam Saad. And I, I like yeah. what they bring, so I, I guess maybe that's probably a bit of a cheap They just haven't had a chance to bring what they can bring. Sure, yeah. Okay, maybe that one's a little generous. But there is one that is the final way probably biggest positive, and that's Harry Mackay. Um, leading the comment at the moment doesn't look like he's going to be challenged too much unless Buddy explodes in the second half of the year or something like that but uh, absolutely killing it arrives well and truly as a big key forward the negatives are simply yeah probably the the recruits (laughs) the ones that I just mentioned as positives obviously you would like to have seen them come in and maybe do more so I I I still think they're adding to the side Yeah. but the negative is that um, they're not hitting quite their straps Yeah. Um, but I think just generally speaking to summarise their Negatives, it would just be that they haven't taken those steps to beat contenders, and that's the next step for them. 
it might just be Williams is just a good halfbacker and not the best midfielder. It might just be something yeah. as simple as that. Yeah, that, I mean, that happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you see them turning their fortunes around anytime soon, Carlton? Eh, it's a tough one. They're like, it's one of those things. Once everything starts clicking, other parts might just the timeline just might be difficult for them to mm. for everything to click at the optimal time. Yeah, they are still quite young. Yeah. Um, I think there was a graphic the other day of how many players are in their prime. It was like eight, and one of them was yeah. Matt Owies, and it's like, I mean, look that how doesn't many... really count because he did the whole basketball route and came in late. Didn't right? He? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, like. Eight, just eight. I would think yeah. of the Eagles as like all but two in the starting twenty-two when we're fully fit. Um, so that just shows the contrast between a side that's like really young and experienced, yeah. and there's still a lot of upside. Obviously, I've rated them a D minus because maybe that's harsh because I don't think they're going terribly. But uh, if we're comparing it to preseason expectations, I think if you showed Carlton fans that they were thirteen and four and seven after eleven rounds before round one. They'd be yeah. like, holy shit. They'd want it at least closer to like a 500 record, like a 6-6 six and six type thing. Or 6-7, uh, yeah. that'd, that'd be probably acceptable for them. But yeah, yeah, 4 and seven's definitely not acceptable for yeah. their expectation. I mean, 13th puts them below your Fremantles, your Essendons, yeah. GWS, um, St Kilda. I think they're still lower than St Kilda. I think St Kilda's 12th or something. Maybe. Um, I was looking at the No, they're, no, they're that, certainly yeah. below St Kilda, actually. So, yeah. So I put them as D minus, maybe a D if I'm feeling generous. That's probably my range yeah. as well for him I'd yeah. say I was kind of more grading it against their fans expectations but probably D yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll settle on a D just like Saturday night anyway um, <laughs> how would you like to take us through Collingwood well we'll go pretty straight from the top here record to a 9 they're 16 from the ladder I think our expectations were even though they'd had a rough off season and all that we we're still expecting them to push for finals if not outright contendership mm-hmm. like that's sort of in that category but so far, my season, too long, didn't read. I've just written here, dog do on a stick, is how I'd describe Collingwood this year. Ouch. They've been terrible. Yeah. Like, I, like you sort of thought the group would rally and sort of build upon, like, the off-season trauma they've had, but, like, the whole club's imploding. Like, you see this board situation, it's a sort of, mm. it's a, just a bad year to be a Collingwood fan, unfortunately. It really is. I probably can't remember a worse 12 months. For a club, or for that club anyway. Yeah. Uh, certainly. I'll oh, say so the only one I can think of is Essen. <laughs> uh, yeah, West Coast back when I was about oh, yeah. 13 was pretty bad. Yeah, as that well. was 2007. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's a good point. But uh, Adelaide probably had their fair share of uh, yeah, you, poor form around Because you would have been the only team that's ever had the piss taken out of you by the chaser. So <laughs> I remember they did a skit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, back to Collingwood. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm aware I've made this point a lot on this channel um, and when we talk about Buckley and stuff. So I don't want to repeat myself, but. I think the telling thing with Collingwood versus all the other teams around them is that they should be so much higher. Yeah. They're where they were last year. They won a final. They got into the last six teams of the com and lost Trelaw, who was a good player, and Stevenson, who was a quality role player. But that does not equal top six yeah. to bottom two. Certainly um, not. And I think there's a lot of criticism around their playing style and stuff like that. I, I'm going to say F. Is that fair? Yeah. I think that's very really fair. I don't think there's any excuse for them falling away in the nature they have and uh, to their credit they're at least trying to get some games into the kids now yeah Bianco, that was pretty much my positives blading some kids negatives yeah. pretty much everything yeah right i initially <laughs> yeah. wrote d but i'll change it to an f i think realistically fair enough yeah i, I think if you're gonna give anyone an f it's them yeah. and one other team that i'll mention a bit later so Oof. um but my prediction for collingwood long term here is i've i think they're gonna implode into something special sort of in like two years time similar like what melbourne did in 2018 yeah Except this implosion from Collingwood's obviously much more spectacular than Melbourne's mini one after 18. Mm. Like, this one's off-field. It's more through True. the club rather than just a bit of a performance lapse after that 18 hot run from Melbourne. Mm. But I think they can do something similar with the talent they've got on their list in a couple of years' time, catch everyone off guard when they've sort of been a bit written off again. Yeah. It's almost similar like... Similar to Melbourne. We could see a change in identity for this club. Like, in the... Okay, so in 19, the Ds dropped down the ladder, but... Collingwood's facing potentially potentially a new coach. I don't know yeah. what will happen there. Um, you know, maybe they sign some, like, obviously some youth, that, uh, but also, like, maybe they go after a Zaki Merritt, new president, all that stuff. So, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a massive transformation. It's hard to imagine them bouncing back so quickly, but they are so well-resourced. And they've got the talent on the list. That's the thing. Yeah, they've I still do. got a lot of talent. Yeah, even Brody Grundy's been playing mm. good again, at least from a fantasy perspective, so... Yeah, I think we agree on Collingwood. Uh, they stunk it up. Yep. Talk about Essendon. Uh, I'll take us through that. So the preseason goal would have been, I put an outside contender for finals, not 
expect to play finals, but be competitive around that mix. So obviously, I think they finished like 13th or something last year. Right. Uh, excuse me. Certainly that range of just behind the realistic finals contenders. Then there was a lot of talk about their exodus with Danaher and Saad and uh, Orazio leaving. And people made the point, it's probably only Saad they're losing from that team yeah. regularly. So that I I made a preseason expect uh, sorry prediction rather that we're going to be around the mark exactly where they are and then fall away later in the season. Um, but I think a pass mark for them would be to be pretty much where they are, yeah. if that makes sense. So just proving themselves to be good enough to compete with those top yeah. eight to six teams, um, which they're certainly doing. So uh, so they're currently sit ninth at five and six on the back of um, a really good win in Perth, claimed a big scalp. So that's probably a big positive for me. Claiming a... I mean, you can sort of argue against the Eagles being a big scalp right now, but not too many teams win at Optus mm. against the Eagles. So you've got to give SM yeah. credit, and they thoroughly outplayed them. So, uh, And they nearly did the same thing to GWS, who were also in similar good form. Um Parrish is probably one of their biggest individual. Yep. Uh, He's in- a smoky for the Brownlow, I think. Oof, that's huge, isn't it? Yeah. Like, not many people rated him at the start of the year. Yeah. And uh, w- that would be one of the biggest stories in football. I, have, I put money on it a while ago. I'll say what, I wonder what the cash out is at the moment. Mm. While you're doing that, I'll keep taking us through. Uh, yep. Nick Cox as well. So they Even that whole draft class, but Coxie in particular. Coxie yeah, in particular. On. Yeah, you're right. And Perkins as well. And, Z- and Zach Reid was the other one. Um, Nick Hind as a recruit yep. for them uh, recruited well yeah. in a year that they lost or it appeared to lose more than they gained they've um, replaced Saad seamlessly with Hind really it seems yeah yeah no Hind has been really good uh, and they've been really competitive against good sides there hasn't been too many shocking performances although I will touch on those in the negative so there's a couple of results that stick out like a bit of a sore thumb and that's losses against the Lions and Power which we kind of just brushed off at the time because they're are comparatively weaker than those clubs uh, but they kind of do, when you contrast it to the rest of the season, they don't reflect how good Essendon's been since then. So yeah. just a couple of performances there where they let themselves down. And then I think round one's probably their worst loss of the year. Remember they were 39 yeah. or 40 points up and lost by a point to a Hawthorne side that then lost to North Melbourne in his bottom <laughs> two and potentially wooden spooners. So that would sting if that cost them finals. Oh, yeah. So that, that that is probably the biggest negative that I've seen from Essendon this year Definitely. in a year where it's otherwise going pretty good. And yeah, I looked up that patch. I put a tanner on him. I can currently cash it for pretty much forty bucks. Yeah. So wow. I got on him at a hundred to one. He's now seventeen to one. Yeah. Well. Because the thing is, I saw the thing is the games where he killed it were like the games they won, mm-hmm. like the Anzac game, shit like that. Yeah. But I, he'll I most likely get the free votes in most of the games they've won. I think it's five out of six games where he gets more than thirty, they win. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if that went up to six out of seven if after the Eagles game because I heard that during the Eagles game. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, so barometer player is mm. a term we're hearing a lot. Definitely. But definitely one of those. Um, yeah, I've put, I've put a B. I think they should be very pleased with where they're at. Um, pretty much best case scenario, this was what people would have said for us. And maybe that's not quite right, mm. but performing to a good level uh, and also getting a lot out of young players yeah. um, and finding a potential elite midfielder. So uh, for I think they should be happy. Similar logic, I've gone to C plus because like they're doing what they're supposed to. It's a passing grade, like the C yeah. plus, just because they're sort of done it. Like you got to give them a bit of credit for actually doing it rather than just a flat C sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. They've yeah. had some good positives, like Nick Cox, that sort of thing. Yeah. So that's yeah. worth at least a C plus, maybe even a B minus. The challenge for them will be to continue it throughout the whole year because they have a habit of dying off late in the mm. season. So um, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Fremantle, the boys. Yeah. Five and six. They're currently eleven from the ladder. The expectations going into the year, for me, I was sort of pushing finals, but realistically, we're probably another year away. Mm-hmm. Basically, our season so far is basically we're at least another year away from doing anything, I think. We've had some good positives, like the midfield brigades really stepped up, like Achera, Brayshaws, Sarong type dudes. Even Mundy's resurgence is like an early season Brownlow favourite, like all Australian type of dude. Sean Darcy's been outstanding since he's... It's been full time in the ruck. Even developed as a forward though in those early rounds when they were playing Lloyd Meeks. So that's been some really good positive progress from Sean Darcy. Mm-hmm. And there's some back lines been so flexible, like in the face of different injuries, like Luke Ryan, Low Cox, Pierce, yeah, Pierce, all mm-hmm. those guys playing different positions. And some good moments from forwards, like even though our forward line's been inconsistent, we've had good moments from guys like Schultz, Henry, even Tabata. Yeah, even Tabs. Yeah. Negatives. I've got Fife's goal kicking. Oh yeah, and injuries still have us over a barrel. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things with Fremantle. They've get so many injuries so regularly to the same players that people don't even start mentioning it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not even part of analysis. It's like, 
but I guess it makes it easier to compare your improvement because you've yeah. Pierce and Amling have barely played. So, but I mean, it's really positive that your back line is still a strength. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You haven't really struggled to replace and fill those. I holes. almost think like Cox and Logue's our best key <laughs> back combo at this point. Yeah, Brendan Cox has uh, been a massive improver yeah. this year, hasn't he? Yeah, even Griffin Logue. But yeah. not as good as last Logue was better last year, I, I will say. But Logue sort of broke out last year, if yeah, I remember correctly. Won't bro- like not as good as he was last year, but he's probably still refining that form off his injuries. Yeah, yeah, no, cool. I was gonna say, um, do you think it's fair to say, or is it as simple as if Fremantle added a reliable forward to partner Tabana, not necessarily even a key, but someone like a Myacek who gets you goals every game? Do you think it's as simple as add someone like that and you're in finals? I'm, I've sort of more had the thought I'd like to get someone so Tabrina gets that number two role because I think he could excel in that role because at the moment he's having to be that number one K forward. Yeah. He's like, he's gotten more consistent over the years. Like a couple of years ago, he'd do three bad things before he does one good thing. Now it's sort of the ratio is sort of improved to like an acceptable level with him. Mm. But he's still so inconsistent. He still has football IQ issues. Yeah, yeah. So realistically, a good number one forward that gives him consistency at goal. So he's less of the. Like, less of an emphasis, mm. I think, would help. Yeah. Which I was hoping Lobb could grow into, but he hasn't really sh- yes. shown that in his game, Lobb, to this point, I don't think. He's more of a second ruck, resting forward type of guy. Mm-hmm. Which seems- is good, but... That is true, yeah. I mean, he did have a big bag against Sydney, uh, yeah. and then a few goals too. <laughs> um, no, he, I think I think for the Fremantle, the obvious hole in their list is the forward line potency. Um, yeah. You know, so obviously if Fife's kicking 13 goals, one, and yeah. not one goal 13, or whatever whatever it was. Yeah. Um, he, you know, that, obviously that looks different, but if I, it, well, not specifically my check, but someone who just you can rely on to yeah. kick three well, goals. I was having an interesting conversation with Beery the other day actually about Michael Walters now that he's sort of having to play forward again. He hasn't been able to recapture his form as a good forward mm. now that he spent those few years in the midfield and now he's been pushed back. It's sort of a bit of a struggle for him. I think he wants to play midfield, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but right? at this point, our young guys are better than him. I'd rather them in there, and he can be more of a point of a difference as a forward. Yeah, and we need those goals when he's a good forward. Yeah, quite clearly need him forward. I yeah, think. yeah, that's it. Uh, where have you rated Fremantle? I've given us a C minus. I've done the exact same thing. Yeah. So I think uh, it, it's just like you—you you probably wanted some improvement this yeah. year. And I wanted I think more. There has some, been, but I wanted more. But it hasn't—it hasn't translated in wins. It's definitely not linear either. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but my prediction was that we didn't have our usual pre-buy hot streak because typically, like, just before right? the buy, we'll have, like, three, four games where we look shit hot and then yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, and then we die in the arse after the buy. But we haven't had that this year. Yeah. So I'm hoping we might have a hot streak later in the year. But it's upside. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, I've realistically said it's doing fuck all. <laughs> well summed up. Shout out to Luke Ryan, though. Saw him at the local spot today when I was getting a coffee. Yeah, nice. Absolute legend. Fucking love that, man. <laughs> Uh, I'll take you through the Cats. Uh, preseason goal, flag or bust, I think that's fair to say. Um, obviously, Especially with Jez Cameron and Isaac Smith, those sort of dudes going through yeah. the door. There were a handful of goals off the premiership last year, added Jeremy Cameron and all those guys like you just mentioned. Uh, so, yeah, flag or bust, I think that's clear to see. They currently sit fourth with an 8-3 and three record. 8-3 and three is a pretty good record. Uh, it's been a competitive top four, so you know in other years you're probably second um, yeah. at this point. But uh, They've had fourth. some rough games where they just sort of weren't yeah. their usual selves, so... So I put a positive, my positive and negative are mixed for them. So I put still in the flag mix despite some indifferent form. Mm. I think that's a really good result because they haven't, well, they started the year very averagely. I think I'll highlight uh, the games against, uh, okay, obviously they lost to Sydney, but even their wins against Hawthorne and the Pies. So they had a 10-point win against the Pies where the Pies just missed everything uh-huh. they they, they could have tried to lose the game and still... Yeah, they've had some uninspiring wins, that's for sure. Yeah, and the Hawthorne one, when they only won by five, like, come on, you're better than that. Um, Hawthorne always have a way of making those close, those Geelong Hawthorne games. Yeah, it just wasn't a Clark high o standard. knows them well. Yeah, it wasn't a high standard game. And uh, I think to drop the game against Sydney as well is not ideal, but then they also probably benefited by getting one over Brisbane. So yeah. anyway, but, but I think it's actually positive that they're not playing well in winning games because yeah. that is the difference usually between a flag tilt is the if you look back on a premiership year, uh, top two obviously will, is usually separated by a win. So it's like, yeah, that game where you won by three instead of losing by three or you, you were off that day, you still got the result. It makes all the difference. Um, so I, I think they're still, they're still be pretty happy. And two best performances were smashing Richmond in the way they did and then beating the Eagles by 100 points as well mm-hmm. when the Eagles were not in terrible form. Uh, obviously, they were a mixed bag, but... That's what put them in terrible form. Well, uh, then again, you came back and pumped us. Yeah, I think we came back well after that. Yeah. 
But either way, so the Eagles weren't playing so bad that you would anticipate a 100-point loss. Uh-huh. So I think it just showed the, the raw power of that Geelong team. Um, and then a few individuals like Guthrie, Tom Stewart, probably Duncan, Australian. Duncan, had a good year. Duncan. Um, and then some of the younger guys as well taking the next step, Parfit and uh, Brad Close as well, I think is, is a good young player. So the other side to that though, as a negative, but it's harsh, I would have liked to see more improvement driven from the youth. Mm. You, got, you got guys like Jordan Clark on your list who can barely crack a regular gig. I'm just sitting here rubbing my hands. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Don't know what will happen there, but it, it would be it would just be nice if Jordan Clark was, you know. It'd be nice if he was on Fremantle's wing. That'd be lovely. Yeah, I suppose it, I suppose Myers is doing exactly what I'm saying. Clark hasn't mm. been able to do, but um, obviously they're just an old list, so it'd be nice to see them maybe transition a bit more you through it. But that's been being picky. They've had a very good season. Um, Did I we give him a grade? Yeah, I've rated him a B. Yeah, is that fair? Yeah, pretty reasonable. I'd no. probably go probably C plus E, B yep. minus, a little lower. But yeah, I yeah. think just the fact that they're eight and three, yeah. that's a really good record. Um, they're in the flag mix and haven't really even they've hit top gear a couple of times this year. So um, I think yeah. that, I think they'd be happy with that. I mean, they were minor premiers in twenty nineteen. Uh, they came fourth in twenty twenty and made the grand final. So I think as long as they're in that top four, they'll yeah. be fine. Um, where do you think they sit in rankings versus the Demons, Dogs, Lions, and the Power, who are the other top five teams, I reckon? I'd probably have them above Power. Yeah. Probably above Richmond at the moment, but Richmond can easily I just... didn't actually mention Richmond. Sorry, oh. the other three were Ds, Dogs, and Lions. Oh, yeah. I'd have them probably above the Lions as well. Hmm. I feel like the Lions... I think they're probably neck and neck with the Lions. Yeah, it's close, but I'd yeah. sort of give them the slight edge because the grand final's in Melbourne. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. So you, you, we always tend to have a little bit of a bias against the teams that will have to play in a way grand final. Yeah. But um, but on form, I yeah. think actually the Lions have probably been better. On form in the regular yeah. season, yeah, but just on the looking at the list and yeah. the intangibles and finals. Yeah, it's like who would you back stuff. in a big final? Yeah. Um, and, then, and then we saw that last year in the prelim. Exactly. Long played away at Brisbane exactly. and just clapped them. So, um, yeah. so but either way, still in the mix. Wouldn't be surprised if they bloody win the flag from this point so yeah. do you want to take us through Gold Coast I've got it right here their record is currently 4-7 and seven. they're currently 14th I sort of thought their expectations going into the year was that they'd show some promising signs maybe push for like a 10th place type finish that mm. was like maybe their that's probably a best case scenario 10th sort of thing for them I think yeah but their season so far is basically Raul went down as quickly as their stocks did as it, the injury happened yeah so basically once Raul went down it's sort of a bit like yeah 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 but I will say some they've had some positive like they've had some positives like Noah Anderson's improved this year rather than sort of like having like a second year's blues type thing. Mm-hmm. Ben King's in the thick of the Coleman hunt. Oh, yeah, fantastic. He's season. so good, so yeah. quick, so athletic. But my negatives for them, it's sort of more of a rather than a season specific, it's more of a macro for them. It's sort of like a negative for them. They're struggling to fill out the with premiership worthy depth. I sort of feel like mm-hmm. some of their top end guys are sort of showing stuff that their premiership depth is still a big question mark. I think for them. Sure. And I've given them sort of a C minus. Yep, yep. And I think they'll struggle under young legs for the back half of the year. Yeah, I'll give them a C minus too. I think that's pretty apt uh, on the basis that they're not going too much worse. But I think I looked at the ladder position last year, their final ladder position. It's almost exactly the same. I think yeah. they're in the same spot, and percentage is like two percent off. So a lack of improvement in wins and losses. Yes, I'll give you a positive spin on what I've seen so far, though. If you remember last year in the COVID year, they started red hot, clapped yeah. the Eagles in round two, uh, clapped Adelaide, and then took it up to Geelong. And we were talking about them for finals. Yeah. And then they fell off a cliff. And I think 2019, mm. they were three and one, I think. They did have good starts the last yeah. couple. Yeah, and then they lost 19 in a row. However, we're now midway through the season, and Gold Coast is still consistently at about the same level. And while it doesn't mean more wins for them right now, I think it's actually really positive that they, what was it last week, they smashed Hawthorne. Uh. So it shows that they're actually running out seasons a little better. Um, yeah, I, you'd I rather that consistency positive. rather than the seesaw. So like, yeah. now that they're sort of shortening the seesaw, even though they're still the lows, it's sort of like less of a... Yeah. It's more of a... Uh, uh, and it probably uh, uh, does give scope for them to improve their ladder position yeah. now. So and you need consistency to build off and you can't get that when you're yeah. seesawing like they were. I mean, you can't really develop a list if they're knackered. Yeah. which they have been the last two years after halfway through yeah. the season. So um, I think I actually think it's been a pretty positive year for Gold Coast. I think we've seen mm. them take a step. It just doesn't look like it to the untrained eye. It's just not, like I sort of said before, not linear. Yeah. So, I mean, they got two potential All-Australians right now, in my mm. opinion, Tuke Miller and Ben King, yeah. both in the mix, and then Hugh Greenwood's leading the tackles. So that's probably the best they can... Yeah. Probably the most represented they've been around that Australian All-Australians squad for a while. So, yeah. 
No, yep. I think I think we covered it. GWS preseason goal finals. Yep. Uh, uh, externally, maybe uh, maybe other people wouldn't agree with that, but because um, obviously they lost Jeremy Cameron, Zach Williams probably had one of their worst exoduses in a single off yeah. season. But I maintained that their list quality was still good enough to play yeah. finals, and I, I think I think they've lived up to that to some extent. They're currently tenth at five. Slow start. Slow start. Exactly right, and then some good form since then. Yep. Um, I'll say, that, oh, sorry, so they're 10th. And I'll say their positives are that they're in the mix despite injuries. So that's the other thing uh, we didn't mention with GWS. They have one of the worst injury lists in the league. Had really bad availability with some key players like Lockie Whitfield, for instance. Uh, Toby Green's out now for a month. Uh, you know, just a host of other players. Phil Davis, Nick Haynes. So we're not really seeing what they're truly capable of. But they're still in the mix of finals. And they will well and truly still do that. Um, I thought they were really impressive. Uh, pretty much, you know, including that Richmond loss. Um, since they smashed Adelaide all the way through to... Uh, when they beat the Eagles. I thought that was a good performance as well. Uh, yeah, I think there's enough to like there about GWS. Lockie Ash has, has turned it on this year. Yep. Been fantastic. Josh Kelly has lived up to a bit to have, uh, of his promise. The Sydney Derby, they won that in dramatic fashion. That would be one of their more memorable wins for a while, I reckon. And Toby Green, in general, just being an All-Australian yep. um, level form. The negatives. Oh, I should have mentioned Jesse Hogan as a recruit yep. is looking better considering yeah. I expected nothing. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I'd say Hogan's probably a positive even though his health's been yes. up and down. But yeah. when he's been on the park for him, he's looked great. Yeah, I think there's, the, the confidence must be there though. A couple yeah. of bags of four or at least one. So uh, goals, that is. Yeah. Um, negatives, <laughs> I say no Bruce, a player they recruited to desperately fill a need. Um, and they've had to rely on Mumford again because he's yeah. been injured the entire season. The slow start, as you mentioned, probably makes them look a little bit worse than they are because I think they're a better side than West Coast but currently sit Mm. below them on the ladder because of their poor start. So they lost to St Kilda early. They weren't great against Freo and you have to think if they played that game again now, it'd be different. I'm not saying they'd win, Mm. but I think like you guys dispose of them and I don't think... I think they're better than that now. And I thought they were quite average against Brisbane, but it's also, based on the form lines, is Brisbane just amazing? Well, in that particular game. Or is GWS just flaky mm. it's hard to tell yeah. in isolation so but it's, it's it's another result that doesn't really show you how good they are yeah. uh, they do have a few flakes in their armor though g-dubs i'd say sure yeah grade c minus yes yeah, i'd back that yep yeah. Oh, yeah. on the basis that they're probably around about where they could have realistically hoped considering bad injuries is probably the only thing yeah. pushing them out of the eight right now they've given themselves a chance to still make finals yeah. considering their rough start and injury so yeah. that's Invested in the kids Tom, as yeah. well. Um, Tom Green's starting to have some good games. Didn't even mention Tom Green. Yeah, he was fantastic against West Coast. So um, Hawthorne. Two and nine, currently in 17th. Who would have thought for Hawthorne? You're getting all the good teams, aren't you? Gold Come Coast, on. Collingwood, Hawthorne. <laughs> yeah, buddy, I've North Melbourne as well. I've mm. also got, so I've, mm. I'm king of the spuds, mate. This must have been depressing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes me feel better about my own team yeah, getting true. to reveal all these other teams. Yeah. But I've sort of got written here for Hawthorne, like expectations going into the season. I sort of had them in the bridesmaid category for finals, so sort of like just mm-hmm. missing out, like being that yep. sort of close to it, but not quite. But my season report for them so <coughs> far is basically putrid. But the less management strategy, while they were contending, I think sort of starting to show its effect on them mm. as a list. Yeah. Like the, the sacrifice in drafting and yep. the value they put in that, you're sort of starting to see that lack of depth and yeah. of talent and people through the door yeah, and they're relying too much on older sort of guys that are injury prone one top 10 pick since 2006 being mm. um, Denver Granger Barras we haven't yeah. actually seen yet although you know I'm sure he's going to be a good player but yeah. Yeah, sorry, continue. But yeah I've sort of got in terms of positives I've sort of got like guys like CJ some of the flashes of youth like Kaczynski some of these other guys who've had bobbed up had some promising giving them something promising at least yeah I agree with that but then the negatives I sort of alluded to it's like the reliance on older guys with health issues like mm. your Titches your Jagers your Chatty Wingards like they're good players but they're not like premiership necessarily midfield top three players on your team type of guys I don't think for me probably been underperforming as a unit mm. if you list those players on paper I feel like that's a pretty decent midfield. It's not amazing, but it's good. Yeah, but because of all those health issues over the years, it's hard yeah. to give it a, the value that you would just on paper, I mm. think, for those guys. Yeah. But in terms of a grade, I've given them a D, and my prediction is that they will tank for draft picks. Tank for draft picks. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't, yeah, whether they strictly tank, whether they need to tank, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> probably just try and win every week and still get picked two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I had a question for you. Are they underperforming? I think we both agree yep. that they're underperforming for 
Uh, I, I'm versus expectations. That, yeah, and it's okay to rebuild, but yeah. they're the only team that's lost to North this year. Um, <laughs> got smashed by Gold Coast. They're just yeah. really in a rut right now. And maybe yeah. they'll turn it around. Um, I've given them a D minus. Yeah, I got a D. No, no Hawks fans would be happy with how that's going, even uh, acknowledging that. Yeah, they have extremely high standards over there, those Hawks yeah. fans. And it's not without positives, like you said. There are yeah. good young players, um, yeah. but they need to add to it. And that's been our position for a while. Yeah. Melbourne. Oi. This will be easy. Yeah. Um, Pre season goal, I put. Top six to eight. Mm. I think this is... They finished ninth last year after the horror 2019. They would have wanted to play finals this yeah. year. And I think that would have been probably a pass mark considering, mm. you know, we look at the demographic of that list. The talent, uh, as we've seen, yep. is immense. So to sit first and 10 and one, I'm going to give them a B. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, they're probably... They're my only A+. Plus. Um, the positives yeah. are literally too many to name. Yeah. There's not really too much going wrong down at Demon Land. Um, One that stood out for me is their backline. Like, yep. The fast improvement from their backline, like having guys like May and Lever healthy, is mm-hmm. just their ability to intercept. It's Salem. Just, yeah, Salem. He's uh, virtually close to all Australian form. Um, and then even someone like Hibbert on the screen, I saw yeah. last night, I was like, nobody even talks about that guy anymore. He's yeah, and he was, a, he was a former All Australian defender yeah, at one point. Trent Rivers. Really sure. yeah, he's been very nice. Yeah. Both these Freo boys for Melbourne have been very nice, actually. Yeah, I, I highlighted their youth as one of their biggest positives yep. in driving a lot of their improvement. Like we talk about the Port Adelaide 2018 draft yeah. class um, with, you know, Rosie Butters and Dersma. And then you, Melbourne's got Luke Jackson, Cozy Trent Pickett. Rivers and Cozy Pickett. Yeah, that's a tough trio to put against each other those three yeah, three, yeah. three yeah which one would you prefer yeah. I think it's harder to call on Jackson because we he's nowhere near scratching the, his potential like his potential so um, yeah. and also I'm inclined to think he's a, I love Rivers he's so good but then the upside of a Connor Rosie or Butters mm. that's probably where you'd go to them yeah but anyway like we're not trying to yeah. <laughs> trying to compare him and you know talk him down because it's apples and oranges amazing really players yeah uh, Tom McDonald back in form mm. Lever and May I did put in there the fact that they're 10-1. and one. Yeah. Um, And, you know, as well, like, they're 10-1. They've lost a game here at Adelaide. I think it's actually good that their loss was against Adelaide. I think yeah. because then they've beaten all the other major contenders. They've smashed Richmond. Beat Geelong easily, albeit when they're out of form. Um, Reasonably comfy against the Dogs. Yeah, yeah. No, they weren't really yeah. challenged as much as we expected. Um, and then, yeah, four goal come from behind win against the Lions last night. Yeah. The, they've got a mental edge over those teams now. And it doesn't mean they're going to win the flag. But you'd rather that... Than be ten and or you know you, the, the games you lose yeah. against the top contenders, you'd rather drop one to a non-finalist. Well, especially a team like Adelaide, have shown they can show yeah. up and play on a given day. But that's true, and, and it's not as though Melbourne played terrible, yeah. right? It was just it was a, a one-point loss, was a challenge was. away from home. Yeah. Great game, great game of footy. Yeah. Uh, a plus for me. The only negative, this is really seeking it nitpicking. out, <laughs> really nitpicking. Probably could have got more out of Ben Brown, but yeah. the thing is, they don't really need him. There's got, Tom McDonald's reemerge because I sort of got him under the pretense Tom McDonald had died in the ass. Yep, and then uh, oh, I mean Fritch and as yeah. Smalls um, and uh, Pickett obviously, yeah. and uh, Wiedemann's in there as well. You know yep. they don't really need Ben Brown, <laughs> yeah. but I mean for the caliber of play that we know Ben Brown can be, hmm. like I expect him to be more of a focal point. Um, yeah. But you know, but that's all right. So I think Tom really McDonald's leading in like score involvement or something. So yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they're a bloody good team. I think they're the real deal and still my favourite for the flag. Uh, speaking of flag favourites, North Melbourne. Well, I was going to say, you mentioned Melbourne are 10 and 1. Well, North Melbourne in the opposite pole is 1 and 10 at 18th on the ladder. Lovely. But their expectation going into this year, I've written, was to suck majorly. Which, yeah. But so far, I think they haven't exceeded their ex- those expectations to suck majorly, so that's probably a thumbs up. Like, they've looked not... Like, they still look shit, don't get me wrong. Who's majorly? Is he cute? Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, they've sucked, but they haven't sucked majorly. Is basically yeah. what I'm saying. So that's probably a good thing for them. Mm-hmm. I think for positives is like that you're seeing the development from that initial wave of youth they got through the door a few years ago. Guys like LDU, Simpkin, those sort of Simpkin dudes. In particular, I but think, then you're yeah. also seeing flashes from the newer crops of kids they've got through like the past couple of years, like your Zerhars, your Powell as Powell, well. Yeah, Will yeah. Powell. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not Will Powell, Tom Powell. Oh, Tom Powell. Yeah. Will Powell's Gold Coast. Yeah. Yeah. I got uh, mix up with Will Phillips, who's the other high draft. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not uh, that we've seen too much from Phillips so far. Yeah, I think with North, uh, it's just a case of what did you expect when you gutted the list as hard as you did, yeah. and I, I think it was uh, under Reese Shaw technically, so it's not really on David Noble or, or even like whoever made yeah. the decision. I'm not, it's not just the coach, but trading Ben Brown for mm. 
26. Um, uh, gutting like a leadership, like was it Pittard, um, Ben Jacobs, you know, mature bodies. Yeah. Jamie McMillan, I think, was in yeah, that. McMillan I could, got yeah, canned. He did. Yeah. Um, what do you, yeah, what do you expect when you rip the asshole out of a list? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like... Um, so I, I like you. I think it could be going worse. Yeah. Um, got a win under their belt. Yeah. Got that pressure off. Um, but despite that, as a negative, I've sort of got overall they're pretty non-competitive, which means eventually it will be hard for guys to develop when they're getting pummeled. Mm. Like even though they have been better than expected, it's still sort of pretty not competitive. Mid-season draft though, they picked up a kid that was projected to go top ten this year huh. in the mid-season because he was an overager. Yeah, which is wild. Yeah, uh, mid-season draft is an interesting, interesting thing. I'm going to do a video on it soon, mm. but it's not being used in the way that people expected it yeah. to I was expecting Freo to have a crack but they didn't it was, no, a quick it was just about loose spaces as well yeah. but, but yeah sorry North Melbourne yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll go with a grade of C plus okay so sort of like you knew they were going to suck like they couldn't really do much about it but they've sort of sort of shown a little incremental mm. improvements and stuff so you sort of give them credit yeah but don't forget we're comparing it against what they wanted at the start of the year do you think that uh, I think they had pretty low expectations last going spot into though it? would be a C plus Maybe not a plus, but yeah. Yeah. like the fact they've sort of, you can see some of the talent. I know, I know he's saying you're not judging yeah. them too harshly on what's happened because yeah. that's and that and realistically, I could have seen them sucking even more than they have mm. as well. That's part of why I'm giving them that. Yeah, isn't that on your Tinder bio? <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably get more matches if it was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, probably, I'll, I'll probably say D. Just, I just find it hard mm. to give a C to the team that's last. Yeah, last, that's so. reasonable. Yeah, but again, like, what do you expect yeah. with the list management decisions? Um, My prediction is continue to suck. <laughs> yeah, I think last or second last is yeah. as far as it goes. That's an all range. Um, watch them make a finals run now that I've said <laughs> that. Port Adelaide. Pre-season goal, I think it's fair to say top two after being minor yep. premiers last year. They would have... I mean, top four would have been acceptable. Top yeah. two would have been the goal. Current record is fifth at eight and three with a pretty mm. good record. Positives, they've only dropped three games, yeah. um, which is good because it's a competitive top four this year, and that's uh, and they're in it on wins and losses, just not percentage correct. based on that eight and three. Correct. Yeah. Po- positives, individuals, uh, you know, you got your boke is obvious, mm. um, but Ollie Wines, I think, yeah, he's having a career best season. Sam Pal Pepper uh, has been good since he come back into the side, yep. and it's it's good to see some middle tier players like Wines and Pal Pepper. Um, if you can call Wines a middle tier player in terms of age sorry yeah. demographic not quality uh, them take the next step obviously with guys ageing um, then the recruits Arazio and Aaliyah um, yeah. Aaliyah's close to all Australian form. yeah yeah um, and Arazio's you know been productive as a goal scorer so uh, as far as recruits go like it's not often that all your recruits come in and do exactly what you wanted them to mm. do and you know for Port they tick those boxes um, weirdly I saw on fantasy that Arazio's been dual positioned as a defender and a forward yeah right which is weird Probably haven't noticed him specifically enough to tell you if he's yeah. been playing backline, to be honest. Yeah. It's not like I do a football YouTube channel. <laughs> um, but no, that is interesting. Yeah. yeah. So that must he must be then thrown back a little bit. Yeah. Uh. Mm. So, uh, yeah, and, and Aaliyah was obviously plugging a backline, like a key position yeah. void that they had. So, um, yeah, no, good good moves from them there. Negatives, injuries to young stars, Butters and Dersmer and stuff like that. Um, which sort of took the wind out of their sails a little bit. I think that happened against Richmond, um, mm. and that was probably the last time Port looked really good. I'm not saying it's because of that, but now that I think about it, probably probably some sort of relationship there. Uh, their form against contenders, um, specifically, oh, I'm, I'm going to say West Coast. Um, no, I don't think West Coast is a contender, <laughs> but what I mean is in tough environments, Port yeah. Adelaide haven't matched it. Yeah. So in round three, West Coast cooked them in the first half, when West Coast, you know, had Shuey and Kelly and all yeah. that running to the midfield. Um, and it was a chance to test them in, a, like, a really tough environment. Okay, so that happens once. Not a Eagles big are their kryptonite, though, to be fair. Yes, <laughs> for some reason. Even when we don't play well, we somehow win. Um, <laughs> After the siren. Or yeah, that. twice. Um, and we played terrible in the McGovern one. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, but no, not just the Eagles. So, like I said, if they're losing Perth in isolation, not so much. But non-competitive against Brisbane at the Gabba. Again, tough opponent. So it's, I am nitpicking, uh, and then also the dogs in Adelaide to drop that. So specifically, their form against good teams hasn't been great. So like the opposite point I made yeah. about Melbourne. So they're beating the teams right in the thick of it, and then you obviously drops one against a non-contender. Put Adelaide beating the teams they're expected to beat, and then been fairly average yeah. for the most part in games. That, Less than you'd expect. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Um, 
again, that's being harsh and they can turn that around, but I just, if we're looking at it in the first 11 rounds, that's probably one blemish, I would say. I'd still give them B, though, because yeah. they're in fighting, you know, just percentage out they're of They're in the four. thick of it. Yeah. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah. Do you agree that they're f- clearly behind the best four teams? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so to Maybe even behind Richmond, even though Richmond's been underwhelming this year. Yeah. It's just you can't it's write so off Richmond. It's hard to rate Richmond. Yeah. But I understand oh. why you say that. Yeah. yeah. You'll, you'll say why in a minute. We'll continue with Port Adelaide if there's yeah. much more to cover. Though. Oh, I'm just going to say yeah. The, my, yeah, B, clearly yeah. behind the best four, but it's a long season. Things can change. Yeah. So it's still an outside contender yeah. for me. What's the prediction, you reckon? So I've done the ladder predictor, yeah. and I actually have them sneaking into the top four, but I think yeah. their fixture is generous. Yeah. So I'll say there's a good chance they make a prelim this year. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, take us through, Richmond. Well, they're currently six and five, currently sitting at eighth. Our expectations would have been flag or bust, like top contender. Yeah. Their season so far, I've sort of written here, the standard Richmond building themselves as underdogs early in the season to sort of come swooping later in the finals and catch mm-hmm. everyone late. Mm-hmm. I'd sort of say the positives from even though they've sort of had the rough start here, the positives is depth players you're seeing coming in and showing something like your Callum Coleman Joneses, your mm-hmm. Rigo, <laughs> Hugo Ralph Smith, those sort yep. of dudes like... Guys you weren't expecting to contribute to their success are contributing rather than the usual offenders. Yeah. So it's that's promising for Richmond to know that even if their top contender guys aren't there, they've still got the talent to do what they got to do. I agree with that. And for negatives, I've purely just got their health and consistency because even if they've been relatively healthy, they haven't been the most consistent selves. Mm. Bearing in mind where they won their flags from, as everyone mm. knows, as well documented, they were... Or in the mid first half of the years and all three years yep. they've won the flag around this range still sit in the eighth bearing in mind that how happy do you think they'll be with where they sit on the ladder well, i don't think they'd be happy with it because i know their mm. quality's top four mm. comfortably mm. but realistically they've got the experience of attacking mm. finals from all sorts of positions to not really worry about it they just sort of probably would have the mentality that once we're in finals we're good we just have to get there that's it uh, I, I guess, yeah, I asked that because it may seem like Richmond's coasting, but in the doco on the, um, on that Amazon Prime doco that they did... You the last see, season one? Yeah. yeah. Admittedly, there's other things going on there, like off-field turmoil, COVID, yeah. hubs and shit like that, but there was a lot of concern for where they were in the midpoint of the season and they ended up winning the flag yeah. quite easily. Not easily, but, you know, convincingly. But having that concern is part of the process that makes them so good. So Exactly. But yeah. I, I'm wondering if there's a psychological effect there where it's like, okay, we're eighth. We've been eighth every other time we win the flag. This will be fine. Yeah. And then maybe the urgency is not there. It could happen. Yeah. I'm, I'm clutching the straws, yeah. but it's just an interesting Certainly not impossible. It's just a mental hurdle they'll need to get through. Um, yeah. But yeah, I agree they won't be happy with, with that. Um, I guess, I don't know how much there is to say about Richmond because it's just a case of, yeah, they're not that good, but they could be. Yeah, <laughs> do you know pretty I mean? much. There's pretty not much. really too much to analyse in that sense, but I think it's... Do you, I mean, do you agree they could finish eighth and win the flag? Yeah. They're the one team that I think I could imagine doing it. That, the team would most likely do it from yeah. out of any team. Just because of the ability to lift in finals. Yeah. It doesn't mean they will do it. Especially Dusty in finals. Yeah. He's a scary player in a finals game. Exactly, yeah. But yeah, my grade for him was a C, so like, because they're still in, they're in finals, like... Yeah. They've had a rough start and they've still doing what they got to do to attack finals when mm. the time comes. I gave them a D, actually. Maybe it's a bit harsh. Also a grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think... Um, yeah, I think they've had some indif- really indifferent games. Yeah, that's Getting fair. Getting clapped by Geelong, um, Melbourne. It's hard to... It, you, like, you don't want to grade them better because you believe they'll come back. We also just have mm. to look at what we've seen. And I think... D is probably yeah. for me personally. I saw the main reason I'd say is because all they need to do is be in finals, to yeah. have a chance, and they've put themselves in a position where they're currently in the finals. Yeah, and they'll have their uptick late in the season and assault finals hard. Realistically, mm-hmm. that was yep. my prediction. No, I like it. I agree with you. <laughs> your logic there. We got four teams to go. I'm going to take us through the Saints, whose preseason goal would have been top four. Their current record is 12th at five and six, and one of the biggest disappointments for uh, this season in terms of delivering on the promise. Flop being um, sort of a. I mean, I think I've been saying that they're a young side, but I believe they're actually not when you look at their list demographics. But it is, I think it's fair to say that a lot of their best players are in their prime or still coming into their prime. So a lot of upside for them in that sense. Somebody like a Jack Steele, for instance, who's been one of their few shining lights this year. He's been pretty good. Um, yeah, the positives would be, I think in terms of performances, their win over West Coast probably sticks out like a sore thumb as being one of their Big only comeback. good win. Big comeback, yeah. for sure. It was. It was a good performance, com- convincing performance, something like a 50 point, 52 point turnaround. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a good game. And 
games to Max King. Yep. Yeah, it was good to see him get some continuity. Uh, obviously, uh, injury hit riddled yeah. past, but uh, and I, I know I know he's been ac- inaccurate in front of goal, and the whole side has. He just needs the chance to get his eye in. Yeah, but I think I think yeah. Anytime you're getting games into a, a raw talent like that, uh, the, 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 I guess that's that's really me clutching at a positive there. Brad Crouch has slotted in pretty well. Um, yeah. You know, he's performing pretty strongly. Yeah. Uh, for his job. Yeah, it was sort of out of favour at Adelaide. Jack Billings has been a good performer as well for mm. them. Um, I'm a big fan. Negatives, I think they're far outweigh the positives. So it would just be Obviously. the big losses. Yeah. Uh, and it's specifically the, the thrashings. So it's not even as though... It's not as it, even as though they've been really poor every game. It's like they'll go from being decent to getting slaughtered by 75 points against Essendon. Uh, who else did they lose by heavy? Richmond? It's mm-hmm. like 86 points or something like that. Their percentage was at like 72. Oof. And, I mean, you even look at the game against North where it's like, okay, so we... The season's still not dead yet. Let's play North. Let's wrestle back some percentage. They conceded five goals to one in the last term and only won by 20 points. So, I mean, are they really having a good crack this year? I don't know. I think mm. I think that's a fair criticism of them. Uh, you know, I know there's injuries, but I don't think their injuries stack up against your GWSs, your West yeah. Coast that come to mind. Um, Other teams have copped it much worse. Exactly. So it's not, it's not a great excuse. They're really low on confidence. Uh, their fade-outs have been poor. Finals has gone as far as I'm concerned. Gresham injury doesn't help. That's another negative. Yep. Um, he hasn't really had a lot of luck. Inaccuracy uh, has been really poor. And Dan Butler probably hasn't, well, certainly hasn't recaptured the form that made him awesome yeah. in 2020. So I'm going to give it an F. Yeah, fair? fair. Very yeah. fair. Considering top four was ex- not expected, but... Finals possible. was very expected. I'd say top six was their pass mark. Mm. Or even just finals pass mark. Yeah. Top six, more realistic expectation. Top four, their goal. Yeah. So to be nowhere near it. I think uh, just on what we've seen so yeah. far. I'm not saying they can't turn, turn that around, around a little bit, yeah. but yeah, just on what we've seen, it'd be hard for them to. Yeah. So yeah, did you say F as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that sums up the Saints. Uh, do you want to take us through the Sydney Swans? Well, the Sydney Swans currently seven and four, sitting in sixth place, which is very impressive considering their preseason expectations was probably fringe bottom four, realistically probably closer to bottom eight type of team. Yep. Like, their season so far, they had a shit-hot start. They were incredible the first four or five weeks of the season. They've cooled recently, but even though they've cooled, they're still a good team that can compete and yep. put on a good game. They're just not like that early magic they had the first four or five rounds. Yeah. But the positives for them I've sort of written here is their youth brigade could be the best in show in the league, I think. That's yeah. certainly a conversation. That's we were saying that in the first opening month or whatever, definitely. Yeah. And I've also written here they've got a dynamic and engaging game style which will help the AFL's wet dream of luring in New South Wales fans. <laughs> That's something I've written there. That's, That's yeah, outside the box, but I don't mind it. Yeah, like it's an attractive place to watch. Like, yeah. and other than watching my own team, which depresses me half the time, but yeah. if I'm going to watch a game and I see Sydney on, it's like that'll be a good game to watch, especially True. this year. Like they're playing right now, actually. Yeah, and the negative I've sort of got the cool off, and I don't know if they'll fully regain that magic they showed early, but they'll still be a good team throughout the year I think like they've sort of given themselves that foundation yes my prediction for the rest of the year was sort of that they'd be competitive the rest of the year but they'd probably likely finish ninth or 10th just missing finals making that young group even hungrier for a big 2022 sort of thing yeah but despite all that I still gave them an A yeah fair enough I think I gave them an A as well on that same yeah. basis I think I think I still have them in my A just they're scraping in I think at the expense of West Coast and I think it depends how West Coast go in some of their 50-50s. Yeah. And that, that's literally what will decide the, the finals, isn't it? Just how teams yeah. go in their 50-50s. I think they're 10 points up against the Saints right now, three-quarter time. Mm. Um, <coughs> excuse me, another game that their finals hopes hinge yeah. on. So hopefully, uh, well, hopefully we're not made to look silly by that result. But um, yeah, I, I still think finals. And uh, do you think they could potentially go deep or do you think they're more of an also ran? I think they're a... Get the experience into their kids like a finals game or two for next year and they'll yeah. be a lot better for it. Yeah. That's an eight-goal win over Richmond. A um, little bit of gloss taken off that considering where Richmond have been since. Yeah. But um, still, at the mm. G, very impressive. Yeah, very absolutely. Impressive. So, yeah, no, they'll be stoked. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I got a little tick on my throat. Mm. I said tickle. They're not, <laughs> not dick. <laughs> I was going to say, because like... I was say, you do have a tick on your throat because you're about to talk about the Eagles. Yeah. Um, West Coast preseason expectation top four or preseason goal Hmm. I think I predicted sixth Um, which was looking pretty good up until a couple of weeks ago their current record was seventh and six and five which doesn't sound terrible but 
the nature of some of their, particularly the loss against Essendon, but also looking at the fixture coming up, it did have a significant impact on how likely they are to make finals. Because I think they've got Rich, well, got Carlton at the SCG tomorrow, a uh, ground we never win at, and then they've got Richmond and the Bulldogs after that. So yeah, it's uh, <laughs> injuries having at the worst time. But anyway, we'll uh, talk about the positives. Crushing Derby win. <laughs> Just gonna let that hang for a second. Yeah. Nah. No, that that is probably the yeah. st- standout performance this year, uh, coming at a time where we were they had their yeah. backs against the wall, uh, and they were clinical in the midfield, stepped yeah. up. So we know the team is capable of stepping up. We just don't see it often enough, but we do also have to acknowledge the horrendous injuries um, to key players as well. Yeah. It's not not an excuse for not being a flag contender. I don't think we'd be in the top four without the, with the injuries, but it's probably the difference between us being fifth. You might have scraped a home elimination final. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that's instead probably of exactly. maybe scraping an away one. Yeah, that's it, or even just missing yeah. out. Um, but on the flip side of that, the exposure to youth has probably been a welcome silver lining. Uh, obviously it's a very mature list at West Coast and to get games that are like your Jermaine Joneses, your Bailey Williams, your Harry Edwards, your Jared Branders, um, in particular Brander who hasn't had a consistent crack at it. He hasn't had a consistent role to be fair, <coughs> really, but... That's right, you're right. Um, but also it's just the availability of where that role is yeah. in the side. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, so Witherden's come in, look good. So uh, there's Xavier O'Neill. Hmm. There's been positives there and it does need to happen getting games into the youth uh, and the forward line potency is unrivaled yeah. it's ridiculous and it's it, fl- it flatters our ladder position because of how cl- clinical our forwards have been off limited supply like if, imagine if they kicked like Fremantle we would literally be bottom six or something like that <laughs> uh, sorry about the side swipe there <laughs> <laughs> well they had that ladder come out if goals and behinds were reversed Eagles were like fourth or something no like first that. oh first wait least. sorry no that's not true no we were first in the most accurate yeah, Sorry, well, but it was like if your goals and behind num- total goals for the year and your total behind for the year were flipped, you were fourth on the ladder if you'd kicked. How is that possible? Because we not often often kick way less behinds. Yeah, but still, I think it's That's a sort weird. of... Because we've had games where we finished like 11-5, 11-6. Yeah. Um, but anyway. You just didn't fluctuate as much as other teams did from flipping okay. their goals and behinds. We moved a lot, Fremantle. Interesting. Okay. If our goals and behinds were flipped. Yeah, maybe in the wins we've had, we've comfortably had more scoring shots anyway. That's yeah. possibly what that is. But anyway, uh, negatives, injuries, midfield competency has been really inconsistent. Also, Depth, I sort of yeah. classify that as much as anything. I guess what I'd specifically say is, okay, yes, Shuey and Yo have barely played uh, and Kelly's now out. But uh, but we've seen that the team, can cons- the, 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 your, your Reddens, uh, we'll see, include Kelly because mm. he's been around, your Gaffs and your Sheeds, we've seen them dominate. Yeah. When they want to, maybe I'm asking a bit much for them to consistently kill it. But uh, I'll just say very inconsistent midfield. Worst fourth quarter team by a long stretch, and I'd say the negative is they're probably out of the mix for contending for the flag with a team that's that mature. Apologies, we just had some camera related issues. Um, but yeah, one just, of the few times we've picked up on it actually. Which is yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, yeah, we've definitely got to the end before, and the camera just hasn't been on for the last twenty minutes. But yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway. I just heard a beep went. Yeah, well yeah. done. Um, yeah, I, just to sum up, I think the biggest negative is they're probably out of the flag race, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am a negative fan, so I've given them a D on the... I didn't want to know about your dreams. Ah, um, I've given them a D on the basis that... Or a D plus, actually. I'll say D plus. Just giving them the slight excuse for the injuries they've copped uh, because it's probably the difference between us being the fifth or sixth best side. Especially the, the fact it's predominantly your midfielders very injured, which yeah. is your position where your depth was like... Yeah. And even just, suspect. Even when they're all in there, it's not, not the best midfield. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what have you made of the Eagles and what would you grade them? Probably sort of similar sort of grade. Like that sort of team you always have high expectations for, mm-hmm. especially with the talent they've sort of got in, the sort of emphasis on trading in guys like Kelly and stuff. They've sort of sacrificed a bit of a draft hand, so mm-hmm. you'd sort of want to see that pay off in wins and stuff, but it has been difficult for them. Yeah. So, sorry, what did you grade them? Day as well. Day, yeah, okay. I think that's fair enough. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, the expectations are high at West Coast, so yeah. the grade's always going to be a bit harsher. Yeah. Uh, do you want to take us through the Bulldogs to round out this pod? Well, we've got the Doggies at 9-2, and two, currently in second on the ladder. The expectations going into this year, I've sort of written here, I've got, I had them as a top six contender, maybe pushing that top four if all the planets, like, because there was questions around how their recruits, like Trelaw and stuff, would all fit. Like, I sort of had pushed top four if the planets aligned. 
season so far, the planets have definitely aligned for them. Mm. Everything's looked seamless for them. The only reason they're not top of the ladder is because Melbourne's just come out of nowhere doing it even better than they have. Yeah. Sort of thing. Like, positives I've got there. Midfield depth has been utilised pretty efficiently. Like, that was the big concern. Like, they've figured out how to not kill everyone's production too much but still maximise their team sort of structures without killing everyone's stats. Yep. Bont's been outstanding. Mm -hmm. Probably the Brownlow favourite at the moment. Yeah. And I've got a question mark here, so it's, it's I wouldn't necessarily say this, but on form, they've probably got the best key forward combination in the league in Norton and Bruce, on mm. form. On production. Yeah, production. I, I find it hard to really elevate Bruce. But yeah, he, the only reason you sort of give it to him because he's sort of got the 33 goals or whatever he has for the year. He's yeah. sort of Mind you, how many really elite second key forwards are there? No, yeah, exactly. It's hard to think of duos for good luck, like, other than like your Lynch, Rewalt, your mm. Kennedy Darling. Yeah, Kennedy Darling, I think, still goes all right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but oh, Kennedy I mean, Darling's still in the conversation, certainly, yeah. along but, with yeah, your Lynch. If you're, if you're talking about this year, sorry, Lynch, um, I was just going to say, yeah, the dogs comfortably yeah. have it, actually. I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. On production, Bruce is certainly. still in the common, I think. Yeah, Norton's top 10 as well, I think. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I've sort of for negatives. I've got some tough injuries like Dunkley or some of these guys getting injured. But the team's depth sort of showing. Yeah, I've given them an A grade. Like they've done everything you'd expect and more. Yeah, yeah I'd agree with that. And realistically, prelim or grandy appearance. Mm-hmm. So their two losses were Richmond and Melbourne. So another two time sort of losing to the contenders, which is positive or negative, whichever way you want to flip it. Yeah. You expect them to lose those games somewhat. Yeah. Maybe not Richmond, but. Then again, it's also a mental edge. It's like well, when they meet in September, yeah. will it be different? Mm. It could be. <laughs> Certainly. But yeah. No, I think A's yeah. fair. And I was going to say, is this the best Bulldog side we've ever seen? I think it's better than their 16 team. But... I think it's better than their 16 team, but the, the level that that team hit in the final specifically mm. is far and away above yeah. that. But this team's is. foundation for when they hit like a yeah. position like that, I think. Gives them a higher ceiling than that sixteen team for sure. Like yeah. they've spent the last four years, tr- five years struggling since that premiership, sort of mm. re-establishing that foundation. Now it's rock solid again. Yes, and they're sort of better for it. I think. So in fifteen and sixteen, they finished fifth and seventh, uh, and we're a good team both those years. Yeah. Obviously, winning the flag from seventh. The home and away performance of this year has been comfortably better so yeah. far. So far, uh, they went fifteen and seven, um, and they look to well and truly surpass that. Um, and I think I think everyone rates them a lot higher than people would have rated that premiership mm. side going into that final. So I think it's fair to say that the, the yeah the home and away so- side now is better, and the other other teams that come closer like the 08 till ten period of the dogs where I think they mm. made a few prelims. Yeah, where they had like Barry Hall and shit. Yeah, Luke Darcy. Yeah. I think was that the sort of the back end of his career. Adam Cooney. Yeah. Um, Matthew Boyd, Daniel Cross, mm. that, that kind of side. Scott yeah. West might have been part of that push as well or maybe he just finished before that mm. but um hard to assess but i don't remember the dogs looking this good in a home and away yeah. season in my time actually that's one negative now that you mentioned scott west him sort of commenting about the riley west oh, stuff yeah. like you could say that's like a nitpicky negative yeah, it's, but it's a nitpicky one yeah, yeah. as far as off field issues sorry as far yeah. as pr issues go that one's a pretty gentle so yeah yeah enough yeah. parent on facebook part of the course even if he was the next player yeah that's it that's it um all right well that probably wraps up true footy podcast 76 yep Got dragged on a little bit but that's all right um that it's expected with the mid season the two coffees and the second one being a double shot really helped this hangover but uh yeah thanks guys uh for listening let us know in the comments uh what you thought of our comments <laughs> of our if you think our grades are full of shit let us know yeah it'd be interesting to see as well from fans of particular teams what your expectations were were and how you'd grade it as well yeah. so yeah thank you for your time busher anytime yeah and uh yeah we'll see you guys somewhere on youtube very soon catch you on the flip side cheers <laughs>